Hello, everybody. I uh, apologize for being dead the last couple of months, but I have a good reason for that. I'm going to make this hopefully a quicker video, but as you can see in front of me, I have my ThinkStation D30. This is actually the machine I use to edit all my videos on, and it's been down for a couple of months, and between work and just other things, I have not been able to fix it. So, good news. Mo replacement motherboard finally came in. Uh, what's been happening on this system is that the uh, when I start up sometimes or when I go to shut it down or just generally using it, it'll lock up, hang, freeze. Uh, this happened on all different kind of configurations, not just the one I have in here currently. Uh, and then the motherboard would lose its serial number and uh, sometimes USB support. Uh, so that's why I had actually installed the PS2 cable in it uh, because I couldn't get into the BIOS anymore. And um, ever since then, it's been a mess. So that's why I actually ordered the ThinkStation D30, uh, the V2 BIOS, uh, not the BIOS, the V2 motherboard, uh, because this is the current Sandy Bridge one, which has only support for Sandy Bridge based uh, Xeons, whereas the newer board I have has support for Ivy Bridge based Xeons or the Xeon E5 V2 generation. So I'm gonna go ahead, uh, basically take apart this system, and then I'm gonna put in the new board and build it back together. I have a few changes to make, and uh, it's going to keep it relatively quick and hopefully fix my video editing problems. I'm um, hoping it looks good in this video, too, as well. I have the soft boxes out, and I have my microphone that is recording me, so hopefully I sound and look better. Uh, look better in the video, not in real life, obviously. But here we go. Let's cut to the components. I'll be right back. Here is our replacement motherboard. This is the Descartes Revision 2.0. You can tell this is the Sandy Bridge version as it has this header here for front USB 3.0. It is a proprietary one that Lenovo used. Uh, it looks kind of like a mini PCIe slot. It's probably a repurposed version one of that. And it seems to be better than the actual USB 3 uh, header that they use on motherboards standardly. The only problem, I don't know how well you can tell, but uh, on this board, there's a little bit of damage here. I don't know if this happened in shipping or if this was part of the board. Luckily, there doesn't seem to be any surface mount devices affected, and I don't see any traces running that area. So I should be all right. I made pictures of it just in case I need to end up returning this to the seller. Hence why I'm making this video now, because I want to make sure this board works. I have two match pair of, um, if I can get this to focus, these are Xeon E5 26. 97 V2s. I believe these are 12 core CPUs at 2.7 gigahertz. So I have two of these for 24 physical cores and 42 total threads. I will also be installing this uh, IC Dock Express cage. This is a four, two and a half inch SAS and SATA uh, hard drive cage to a one uh, five and a quarter inch bay. So I could use the remaining uh, five and a quarter inch bay on my machine. So my current plan is to strip the D30 out of all its components and then uh, install the new board, put in the new CPUs, and get it up and running and hopefully <laughs> to see if this works. So I'll be back with the D30 opened and gutted, basically. As you can tell, I have the case completely hauled out, cleared out, you know, cleaned out. I did a little bit of dusting, a little bit of cleaning, and it's time to install the new board. I also went ahead and I installed the front panel, which has the USB 3 header, so that's also nice. So basically, next step, install the board, get all the components migrated, and then I'll give a quick update. We'll go to the next one. So part of the reason I don't do as many videos is I do like doing all this work. I don't necessarily like having to stop and film, I guess. I kind of like to watch like either TV or football in the meantime while I'm doing this, but uh, I'm going to keep trying to do this as much as I can. Oh, anyway, I've whatever. So, all right, I'll be right back in a second. And just like magic, the system is back together. Put the new board in, new CPUs, we did thermal paste, uh, put in some new drives. These are SAS drives. I'm going to, forgot I didn't have the cable I needed. I assume I had it. I have it for the other um, SAS connector. I forget the exact uh, nomenclature for that, but I do have it ready basically to go. I just got to get the right cable and plug them in, rearrange some of the drives, Plugged in the new drive bay in the front. That's the one cable I have working right now. And it's good to go. I'm going to go ahead and hopefully test it and pray that it works because I did just did probably about two to three hours of work redoing all this. But uh, we shall see. Uh, you'll be back at a bio screen hopefully in just a second. All right. So after a very long break and a little bit of a hoarse voice, uh, just getting over a bad case of uh, COVID finally back at it though, uh, back to somewhat normal and wanting to do something somewhat normal. As you can see, we're finally into the bio screen of the D30. I filled out the appropriate model type and serial number of my old machine. 
Uh, it still says invalid for the asset tag. It came with none of that information, but the BIOS is out of date. So on the Lenovo BIOSes, when you update them, you could add, you are allowed to input a new serial number and model type. So I filled in both of those fields. But it took me a very long time to get this set up because I had to basically go through each component one at a time. I thought the board had that issue with the bent corner where it wasn't going to post. Maybe there was something wrong with it besides that. But luckily, um, it was just my CPUs weren't seated. And then I had to go and seat all the RAM individually. So now when we go in, uh, individually in pairs, which was very annoying. And for um, 16 sticks, it takes a little while. So we have our Xeon E5 2697V2s. We have both of them. Both are up and running. Uh, we have our uh, 256 gigs of RAM at 1600 megahertz. We have two Samsung SSDs that I have in RAID 0 for the OS. And we also have an MSATA drive. Another issue I found was getting the right settings of um, right BIOS settings for it to boot properly. I found that in the Northbridge, I had VTD, VT-D, uh, a bunch of whole, whole bunch of these um, options enabled, very technical. Uh, the one I couldn't enable was, uh, yeah, which one was it? It was under PCI subsystem settings. Uh, if I had above 4G decoding enabled, it will um, fail to boot with this certain configuration of hardware I have. I think that might be related to the video cards because the RTX 4000s are pretty new for this platform. So I had to have above 4G decoding disabled. And in order for me to use the both the SCU card, the Intel card, and I also had to swap the RAID card. So originally we were using an Adaptep card. I had to then swap it over to an LSI card that was actually on the supported list of hardware. Uh, I had some BIOS compatibilities with the Adaptec one. In order for those all the work, you have to make sure that um, in advance under, uh, no, I was in security, you have to make sure that um, secure boot is turned off. So I have basically UFEI enabled. I have it booting in UFEI, but I have all the legacy Optroms also enabled. Uh, that's for RAID and all the legacy RAID controllers. It's kind of in this weird in-between where it has full secure boot in UFEI and like the graphical one where it's nice and runs in 720p, but you can't use any of them. Or at least what I found, the BIOSes for those cards and initialized and they didn't work. I could look into that some more, but I've sunk way too much time in that. So let's go ahead and just reset without saving. Oh, it's actually going to restart. Uh, it'll be a long time to get it to restart then, but I will boot right into actually Windows 11, and we'll call this video done. So I will see you in a few. And here we are booted into Windows 11. Uh, once we have all the um, op ROMs, optional ROMs and, uh, and RAID, uh, RAID card ROMs uh, boot up and enable the system, as you can see, it is very responsive. Uh, it really is just an artificial limitation that Microsoft put in place in order for people to buy, uh, to make people buy new machines, basically. So um, anyway, enough rambling. I'm gonna call this video done. As you can see, I've already installed DaVinci Resolve. I'm gonna go ahead, upload these to the computer and edit them and hopefully revive the dead channel a little bit. I told my friends this, but the Process of making videos I'm not very passionate about. It's more of actually working on the hardware. That's where I'm passionate about. This is more of just, uh, oh, man, I got to get my camera out. I got to do this to film it. Uh, so then again, I don't know really why I'm doing this then. But hopefully I will continue. So, But for now, that's it. And I will see you all in the next one.